Good morning, and welcome to our online sermon here at Lion Lake United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Joel Fitzgerald. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, and make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass wither, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of God will stand forever. Get up to the high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up and do not fear. Say to the cries of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might. His arms rule for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense is before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today we're continuing our look at Advent, and last week we talked about catastrophe, about the, the times in our life when we might feel that the world is in upheaval. And today it's a, a, a nice follow-on for that. We're talking about comfort, the ways in which God comforts us in our times of need. And I, I like this passage from Isaiah because I think it talks to us about comfort in all the various ways that comfort is important. The first way is this comfort is a recognition of past and current hardship. Comfort is a, is a, a comfort from a recognition of past and, and current hardship. So in this passage of scripture, we see the, the prophet reciting what, what's happened to the people. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. And then goes into why the people need comforting. They speak tenderly. To Jerusalem, cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double all her sins. So this is coming in the context of the people uh, who were taken into captivity in Babylon, the people of God who were taken into captivity, and all of a sudden they are being released from that captivity. And so God is telling them, you've been released, your, your sins have been expiated, you're, you're, you're going home. And it is healing this not only a release from captivity, not only a, a release from physical bondage, but it's a healing of a psychic wound. When the Babylonians took over Israel and Judah, and, and, and when they took over and destroyed Jerusalem, there was this real sense of abandonment, of, of questioning why, where was God in the midst of this? And has God abandoned us, or, or have we done something so wrong against God? And all of a sudden, the people were able to say, no, God is, is still here with us. God has been with us through the catastrophe, through that which has happened to us, and, and God is still with us. So it's a, it's a recognition, it's a comfort uh, about what has happened in the past. So comfort also comes from the actual restoration and reconciliation. In verse 3 through 5, it, it says these words. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight a desert, in the desert, a highway for our God. It talks about every valley being lifted up, every rough place made plain. And the glory of the Lord shall reveal, be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. So the people are, are literally let go from captivity. They're sent back to their homeland. One thing you should know about the geography here is Babylon was sort of in modern-day Iraq, and between there and in the, in the historical uh, land of Judah and Israel, there, there was a lot of desert, a lot of wilderness area. And so, for the people of Israel, when they say, when, when God is saying, make way, a, a, a make plain a, a way in the desert, it's literally, <laughs> they, need to, they need to move through that. They hope there's a road. They, they are experiencing the, the physical separation that they have had from their homeland. And all of a sudden, 
they have this vision of a new world, that in the midst of the barren plains there is there is grass and blooming and, and new life. In the midst of rough places, all of a sudden there is a, a clear path forward. There is there's a clear way. So sometimes for us, comfort comes from the actual making right of things, the actual restoring of, of right relationship, the actual restoration of, of justice and, and, and the presence of reconciliation. Sometimes my two boys, uh, Michael and Samuel, get into all these fights with each other. And, you know, it's often about stupid boy-kid things. And it's amazing to me how oftentimes, in order for things to be set right, they need to understand that, that things have been equalized, that things have been set to right. So if one of them got a cookie and that makes the other one mad, then, well, to be fair, the other one needs a cookie too. And, and sometimes for us, comfort comes from that restoration from that reconciliation, from things being set to right. Recently, we, my wife got into a car accident, and she hit a deer, and everyone's fine, but our car was totaled. And it's amazing, for the next month, we were in this state of limbo. We were in this state where we didn't quite know what was going on. We were driving rental cars, and, and we were trying to f go through all the insurance process, find out how much money we would get, find out how much money a car, new car would cost. And, and it was this all of this 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 rigmarole and finally we got a car and it's it's a nice car and and we and it was amazing picking it up and driving it home the sense of relief the sense of okay things are restored <laughs> the, the the homeostasis has been maintained and comfort comes from that that sense of feeling everything is put back together but more than all these things Comfort comes from relationship with the God of the universe. Comfort comes from knowing that the one who, who walks beside us is the, is the God of all things. In verse 6 through 8, the prophet goes through this, this litany about who humans are and how all flesh is grass, how, how we are frail uh, human beings, and that eventually we will pass away. But reminds us that even in the midst of that, God is still with us. Even in the midst of the hardest things that we could imagine, God is still walking beside us, providing us with comfort. And then we have this image of a God of tender, loving care. In verse 9 and 10, it, we see them calling up to herald the good news that here is God. God comes with might. His reward is with his recompense. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This image of the God who is both a protector and a caregiver, a comforter, one who wraps us up in God's own arms. In the midst of very real hardship, God is there with us. Now, here's the thing, friends. It, it can be hard for us to feel that because God is this, this concept, this being who is beyond us. Right? The, the, the transcendence of God means God is, is, is beyond us. And even when we feel that close, deep personal connection with God, it, it is not enfleshed in the same way. But here's the thing. Sometimes we can be God's comfort for others. Sometimes we can be God's comfort for those in need. This was a, a particularly important message for me this week. On Sunday after church, we learned uh, of the loss of a, a dear friend and mentor, the Reverend Tamara Williams. One thing you should know is that as a preacher's kid, growing up, my pastors were always my parents. Right, so either my dad or my mom, when I when we were going to church, it was them up, up preaching. It was them doing Sunday school. It was them leading worship, and and that's good. I, I enjoyed my growing up, but it always meant that for me, pastor meant parent. And so sometimes when I was mad at my parents uh, for something totally unrelated to church, uh, that came out at church. When we moved to Traverse City, uh, I had the opportunity to start attending a church that wasn't one of my parents' churches. I attended Traverse City Central United Methodist Church, and so for the first time I had a pastor who wasn't one of my parents, and eventually one of those pastors was Tamara Williams. And she was uh, someone who helped out with the youth group. She went on mission trips with us. And one thing about Tamara 
was that she was a loving, kind, caring person who loved to hug you, loved to smile at you, and was always conscientious about young people and what young people were going through. Would always be a listening presence with us as we were going through all of our teenage angst. Never looked down on us. Never looked down on, on the things we were feeling. Didn't get caught up in it. Always maintained that sense of, of, of perspective. But also understood that what we were feeling felt really real to us. And sometimes all we needed was a hug. And I, I can say that I am a pastor because of Tamra, because of her witness to my life, because of all the things that she has done for me. And for me, going through a, t a time of high school, through wrestling about my own call and my own feelings of disquiet about that, having seen all the good but also all the bad that church can bring, Tamra was one who reminded me who continued to offer support for the call, the nascent call that I had been feeling. And so this week I have been mindful of her witness in my life, and mindful that the comfort that comes from God comes not only from a sense of the divine, a sense of, of, of you know, angels up in glory, sometimes it comes from a hug, from someone talking and listening to you. So dear friends, in our times of need, it is us who provide the comfort of God for each other. It is us in our presence, in our listening, in our quiet, who are able to do that work. So may we do that for each other. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for the comfort that you provide us. Help us, God, bring that comfort to others. We pray all this in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.